Hey everyone, this is Eugene from BlenderNation.com. I thought after QED Qubit's comment about that the tutorial was pretty damn fast, I thought I'd do a more of a lengthier how-to uh, for everyone uh, that was getting confused just because we're all at a different learning stage of Blender and I want these to be as helpful as possible. But I'm more than willing to talk anyone through this if it's still, uh, still trouble. So, let's start. I'm going to start with a scene. I just opened up Blender. Nothing changed here. I'm going to delete the object. I'm going to add Suzanne. And just for show, I'm going to hit the W key, set smooth. And she's smooth, but not the smooth I want. So let's go to Subsurf. She looks gorgeous. All right, let's open another window. And it's going to be the UV image editor. So the first step we want to do is actually get the UV texture coordinates, the system that, you know, allows us to wrap a texture around Suzanne's head into two dimensions. How we're going to do that is by going to our UV face select mode. We can see actually see all the UVs here, or the UV uh, mapping areas. You can actually select some um, different ones, all, by hitting the A key to remove everything, A to select all. I want to unwrap this to put it over here. Right now there's nothing here. So, or not in the way we want. So let's hit the U key we have several different ways of texture calculation, UV unwrapping calculation more so. And down here we actually have several options that I suggest you go into. Uh, well, we can go over those later, or you can take a look at, oh, I can't remember if you did or not, Graybeard's texture tutorial. Uh, not, I can't remember if you went over that, but it's definitely worth seeing anyway. So let's select everything. Let's unwrap. I'm going to use unwrap sphere from view, because just I can imagine, imagine her head can be engulfed in a sphere the best. But what I really want to do is actually just show you that we actually have eyes, mouth, nose, ears, and we can. it looks a lot better in this example uh, when I start painting on here. So we have an image, and what I'm going to do is get a background of that image. I'm going to stick with the resolution of 256 by 256. You can do whatever you like. The higher, obviously, the better uh, for resolution's sake. But if it's not necessary, stick with the 256. It's all black. So now that here comes the fun part, They're actually painting the mix map. You can do it in two ways. You can do it from here, enable painting textures on image. It's actually very slow, not very, not a lot of control. It's, and you know, I just never been a big fan. But you can do it if you need it real fast and quick. And you know exactly where you want it uh, on here, at least on the V. And I'm just mouse wheeling in and out. If you really want to get zoomed in and do an exact area, that's cool. The better way and the more fun, I think, and the, it looks a lot better certainly, is actually painting on the model itself. So let's actually do that. So let's actually go first to object mode. Object mode now uh, isn't just the way we left it. However, if we go into our viewport shading and go to textured instead of shaded, which is or solid, which is usually the one we start with, you can actually see this is the map that we're drawing on right now. You can actually see it right here. That's where I kind of mold it in. You can see the control is actually really poor on that on that side. Let's go back to UV face select mode. And let me say the texture painting mode I consider an overlay to the other modes. Meaning, let's go to object mode, let's do texture paint mode. Nothing has changed with the exception of getting a new paint option here. But really I can't see a thing on here if I'm painting. Uh, if you want to go blind, go for it. But let's actually do it a different way. I'm going to go back to UV face select mode. We see all our UVs, how they're unwrapped over here. And I'm actually going to go from there to texture paint mode. Now we have the paint option down here. We have our, you know, it's gorgeous, of course, right here, our UVs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Wacom tablet and do this. Uh, we have several options down here. Obvious paint options you should explore, mix, add. Uh, some of the subtract never seemed to work for me, but you know you got to really play with this stuff. Oh, the big two I like are size and opacity or opacity, depending on where you're from. Um, so let's—I'm going to start with high opacity, very small size for high degree of control, and really wherever I'm going to paint here is really going to mix well. So I'm just going to roll in her eyebrows. Gorgeous. You can see it updates over here too. Give her a unibrow. Nice. 
Okay, let's start there. Let's also crank this op opacity down to really low. Let's keep the size large. You can see in her nose. I'm just going to do a little bit right there. You notice it's kind of not as bright as here. Um, that's going to do. Uh, so white here will create a complete mixing, and gray will give you an in-between, depending on the intensity of the gray. But we'll see that a little later. So let's start there. And actually, let's give her. Let's do a little bit more here. So let's say I just screwed up. Let's say I didn't want to do that. Oh, I scratched all over her face. Uh, the best way I found is actually if you go the way the black, you can actually draw it back out, and you can see over here it's updating. And if you go around your model, you'll see that actually I messed up too. Just the way the UVs are made and the texture painting does uh, does does its magic. I actually went behind here, and you can actually clean those up uh, with uh, some time and delicate painting. So I'm going to bring this guy back to you white. Okay, so let's just go with this. I like this. I like how it's looking. That's what I wanted my mix map to look like. These spots I wanted a different color, a different type of texture. It could be anything really. Um, rust, it could be ray tracing, whatever you, whatever you got in your hand. So I'm going to save this image. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And just for continuity sake, we'll just call it black. Now we're done with painting. Let's just put all our pens down and go to the node editor. And we're going to start here. So let's actually go to object mode 2 so we can see what we have here. I'm also going to shift P for the preview. And you can see Suzanne has not changed a bit. All right. So we're going to start with materials now. I'm going to close this up. So let's add a material. Material added. I'm actually going to add several materials. And you can do it down here. You can do all your special materials that you've done. Rust, ray tracing, mirroring, whatever you got. Uh, or we can go directly into the node editor. Uh, since the node editor is the wave of the future, let's just do that. I'm going to start a node tree by making this material into the base of the node tree. And here we have the first material out of the node tree. And it's actually, there's no material here. It's asking asking for one. So here's our node tree called material one. Let's I'll call it Suzanne's makeup. Great. Uh, underneath it, though, we're going to have several materials under this node tree. So we're going to have material one. I'm going to add, you can make your own, uh, of course, you know, like I was, the examples I mentioned before. I'm going to add a new material. Under Suzanne's makeup, we have this new material node. I'm going to call it red. And we can either do the color in here, but I'm just going to use the, the new fancy way. And if we click and highlight these branches, they'll knock out. All right. And keep in mind, I'll, I'll just point this out. In the output, any output, and this is not involving any other node, in the output specifically, whichever one has the red sphere highlighted, the, it's actually red in here, is the one that actually is going to be output in the render. This is the only one that does that. All these is really just for toggle buttons. This is important though for the output. Uh, just quick show. You notice this one does not have red even if I click on it. I'm going to add another material. You can do it down here. You can do Shift D uh, to link the two. Let's add another. I'm going to do blue. And of course, I converted <laughs> that one to the blue one. Let's actually add an input material. Since we named it blue, let's just go there. I'm going to actually pick red from here. And I'll keep them here. And so the next one is in color, mix. And of course, you can mix in numerous ways. We'll just leave that alone for now. I'm going to pick red on top, blue on the bottom. And that is important. I'll show you why. Actually, get, let's get them in order. So red will be if it's if the texture is black in our in our texture map, it'll everything will be red. If it's white, it'll be blue. Gray is something in between. Let's actually see what we got now. And it's purple, a perfect mix, 50% mix. Actually, let's look at the preview. There's Suzanne, she's purple. What we're gonna do now is 
to another material and let's just pick this guy here. I usually just throw these materials in anywhere I can find an option, uh, an empty space. Image, load image, black. And I'm going to middle click, you can just automatically load the thing. Beautiful. Um, in the case that you did it on one of your reds or blues, it will actually show up in the in the material. And in that case, if you're not don't want it to show up, just uncheck it. Uh, so right now it's kind of in the system. It's it's in the material system, but it's not loaded into anything. So let's actually go back to our node tree, which is symbolized by the N right here. And actually, I know it's Suzanne's makeup. And we're going to add an input called texture. And I'm going to select the texture we just loaded. I should have named it something more exotic, of course, but I didn't. And the key thing is here it has to be color to value to to the mixing part of the factor node or the factor socket. So I don't know why it doesn't work with value to value. Someone I'm sure can post about it. But so let's do that. Color to color. There we go. What that just did was it looks like here just it's completely black. So therefore all black in the factor means if it's all black, it's all red. And that's demonstrated here. Suzanne's all red. And that's because the texture doesn't know where to go, doesn't know what it's doing. How we guide it to what it's doing is by adding another node in called geometry. Geometry is basically the map input node for a texture. If we go to here, map input, it's these guys down here. Uh, what coordinate system are we using to map the texture? And in this case, we know, we, hopefully you know, we've been talking about it forever, it's a UV coordinate system. I'm going to plug it into vector and you notice it shows up, shows up here and you can see it in the sphere it doesn't really matter much because once what we, because what really matters is when we do a preview and you can see our little handiwork here with our texture map. So you see now where pure white is, blue is shown up, where it's in between gray where the opacity was a little bit different it's a purplish. I hope you can see that with the with the quality of the video. And down here, I, I don't know if you can see. Let's actually get a little closer here. And of course, they're in the preview. It's not as great a render. You can see blue around here and a little bit of purple around because it kind of faded, tailed off from hard white to gray. And you can kind of see it down here. So there you go. There is using a texture painting method to make a mix map for your materials in the material compositing node.